Well, my name is Chris Caraba, and uh, I'm in a band called Twin Forks. It's this new passion that I've spent the last, I don't know, three and a half years developing and working towards in the past year and a half on the road. That's a that can't be broken. That's the sting of heart cut open. So I started the band with a guy named Jonathan Clark who produced a, a covers record of mine. We have a friend named Ben Mola who is in a band called Bad Books and about eight other bands. So we, he travels with us when he, when he can, which is kind of never. My friend Susie, who's in a band from New York called The Narrative. Ben and, and Susie are committed to their other projects. They are part of this band, but they're not present all the time. I get texts from them constantly, how is tonight? What happened today? This, oh, it's great. So it still feels like they're not far away. They helped us find the, the lineup that we've got now, which uh, consists of my great friend, Sean Zorn on drums. It was really hard to find a, a replacement for, for Susie because it really is a duet. Even though it's only periodic harmonies and maybe only just certain moments where the female vocal is the feature moment. We have this little studio, or we call it a studio. This is a studio. We have a garage. We have an intern, which means a dude that just lives in a garage. Um, and so he starts hunting down YouTube stuff. He presents me this, uh, this video of these, these sisters. I was just blown away, absolutely blown away. And I was, I was really done traveling around to find people. So I was like, maybe if they'll, they'll come down here. If it's meant to be, maybe if they're willing to make a trip down here. Let's see where, let's see where they are. So they're, they're two blocks away, as it turns out. So we just called them that night, and it was just instant band. So lucky. So what we found were these, uh, this band, these girls, they're named the, the Baron, Baron Sisters, Kimmy and Kelsey, and they're um, really incredibly talented. We're at like six or seven or eight members now, and everybody's welcome to come back, you know, and they have. There's generally five of us on stage. Sometimes there's nine of us on stage, depending on who's around. Well, we, we even named the band after this idea. Everybody assumed that we were talking about the forks off, you know, two forks off a common road going away from each other. But really it was that we all had come from different states and sort of ended up meeting in weird ways. And it's really the road that we meet, like we're, it's because of these twin forks that we meet on this common road. So we called the, the garage twin forks, where we, we met the place. We, like, we, should, we should call the band something that sounds like twin forks. He's like, I got it, twin forks? I'm like, it sounds exactly the same. Let's go for it. I won't ask you for too much, good conversation and such. As I did with Dashboard, I'd, I'd found a niche. That niche grew, but I didn't expect that. It was a pleasant surprise, and it certainly it changed my life, to be frank with you. When I, I was like, well, we're going to do a bluegrass, outlaw country, folk-leaning band. So I don't know where the deepest corner of that niche is, but that's where we'll be, and no one is ever going to, we'll never have anybody hear it. As we were doing this, you know, Mumford and Sons comes out and The Lumineers comes out. Number one, first and foremost, they write these just fabulous songs, right? So I think Mumford and Sons writes just incredibly well-honed hits. They could arrange them like they were Coldplay songs or the Killer songs. Any number of instrument choices and that they would have been smash hits. And that's the way they were gonna steer radio. It's their moment. But somehow they, lucky for us, they like the same oldie tiny instruments that we like. So the, 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 get, the, the get that we got, the freebie that we got is that now, say your average listener might have heard a banjo on the radio, but I could see it happen, you know, in the beginning of their career, they run banjo, or turn the channel. But now, then they have these massive hits and a banjo just sounds like an instrument that belongs on the radio to them. They understand that it's not, it's not a put off, it's still an invitation. So when they hear our mandolin or our banjo, it's still an invitation. So instead of click, you get, you know, a note. You might get a bar that they listen to. You might get a verse and a chorus now, thanks to all these, I guess, modern tra trailblazers, the Ava brothers, uh, open the door again for, for this music that I think is obviously um, as old as this country is, and um, which is why, how could that be like popular with? Well, this would be popular with kids. It's like well, old guys like this stuff. You know what I mean? So we got lucky, lucky on that one. We, we did the record, the recording process mostly in, not mostly, we did it in Florida. I'd sit much like this in a chair like this with my, with lots of paper around me and just kind of 
play and sing. And Jonathan had this weird distinction of, of being, Jonathan plays bass live, but he's, as I said, the producer in the band, he plays everything. Um, everybody plays everything, which is nice. So like if somebody's not around and somebody needs a drum track, I can run in and play the drum track. And we write together a lot, but I kind of hit a, I kind of stumbled on something at some point, and what I thought was great was that they recognized that I got there first. And so they allowed me some time to write a bunch of songs before we all started collaborating on the writing process in the front end. So I would sit there with all my paper, and, and uh, but the genius of Jonathan and, and Ben at that time was like, they just kind of walk in and kind of give a nod or a head shake, like, that's the thing, that's not the thing. But really once in a while, like really, the, the best thing that they would say would be like, hey, hey, that thing you keep going by, that's your chorus. Go. That's like, stay, stay there for a minute. We'd go into the garage space, the, which is just, there's the chair, it's in the garage, you know? We just turn around and play. I just play it into the microphones, sing it. We'd have just this very simple recording, warts and all, nothing usable. And we'd take a little ride. The beach isn't too far away from where we lived. So generally we'd just like drive to the beach, look at it, drive back. Three, you get a three listens at about that time. And then we'd go in and just play live together. Now here's where things got, here's where the band really got defined beyond like the sort of point of view of the songwriting. We'd already fallen into this thing where we like, where we have this great deep love of folk music and this great deep love of outlaw country and also of bluegrass, which we have some chops and we pepper them in, but most of what I like to do is to steer away from anything too showy. So we pepper those things in, but what we do love, especially about the bluegrass, the biggest influence there is that tempo and that boot stomping thing, and whether it's actually a boot or it's just a, uh, like a, a, a clack on a mandolin or whatever it is. So we get into the, the live setting to record, and this is where Jonathan, as I said, his, his genius comes in. And I have a really bad habit in the studio of cheering or whistling or hooting when I'm excited about something. Oh, we've decided to record this in a live setting. So obviously every single mic is now gonna have, this is a permanent part of that recording. And the first time I did it, I looked at John's hand, which was near the stop button, and it didn't even, he didn't even go for it. And I knew he'd made the decision like that everything stays. So that's, so there's a real liveliness to the record. And then we just kept amping that up. Like that's, well, I guess that's what our band is, you know? Like if it's supposed to be boot stomping, maybe stomp, you know, maybe not wait until, to put another thing that is a drum beat in there besides the drum. Just, we're in here. We're wearing the boots. Just use them, I guess. The old place with a brave face sheet carved from bone. This, this is our record. We're called Twin Forks, and the, the record's called Twin Forks, and our garage is called Twin Forks, and we tell people we're from Twin Forks because uh, we've, we've discovered that that's kind of like wherever we assemble is uh, is Twin Forks. It's less a, a band than a a place we can get ourselves to and, and hope to get an audience to. We often say, like, come visit Twin Forks. I'd say Done is Done is the oldest. It is a, it is a finger, it is a Travis picking song. It's done in an open tuning, which, which is re reminiscent of a dashboard. It's a song about New York City. I'd say it's the closest thing to a dashboard song if there is one on this record. Almost to the point where I thought maybe, uh, maybe it shouldn't be on the record, but then I thought, you know, there should, be some, uh, there should be some continuity, some invitation somewhere on this record. So that's the old, that, that was the first track, but it wasn't the transformative moment. That was a little bit of a holdover from this gentle record I was making. It was just the heaviest bit of the, the gentle record I was making. I follow my gut in almost all things. Um, I think the full lyric is something like, without a guitar, I never remember these things, but uh, some will use their wisdom, and some will use their judgment. Me, I use my gut, and my gut don't lie to me. The song that it's in is called Something We Just Know, and it's a song about a, uh, a certainty I had in this hat, in this relationship. It's, a, it's in narrative format, and, but it kind of breaks away in the bridge and I try to give you my point of view on why there's so much certainty in the rest of the story that I'm telling. I don't claim to be the smartest guy. I have a, a certain intuition about um, songs, um, relationships with friends, with the professional relationships, and um, I trust it. 
I get a sense when things are going wrong. I get a sense that things will go right. I think everybody has that. I've just learned that uh, I do better when I trust when I trust it. It's the, it's the thing I got, and I'm gonna stick with it. It's, it's done me a good service so far. It resonates very well with our audience. I didn't know that so many people led with their gut. I'm happy to know that. I put in a song that I have to sing every night so that I can remember it too, when there's nothing but late nights and early mornings, you know. We just know. I have high hopes for Twin Forks. I believe it can be successful. We've written a, a really special record. The people that will embrace this are the kind of people that will share it. And we get to be an underdog for a little while longer. I'd always loved being an underdog, and this gives me a great chance to, uh, to lose mu money at music again. So, so, so here we go. Let's, let's try not to lose it all, I guess. Hi, I'm Chris Caraba. This is my band, Twin Forks, and you can look for us on Last FM.